don't go anywhere. Stay there, right where you are. IDTV is going live, baby. Coming up. Okay, are we recording? We're ready? Okay, go! Hi, you are watching IDTV. I am Camila Stemmark. And I'm Courtney Venus. And I'm a little bit sad today. This is the last show. This is the last episode of this semester. Yes, I think it's bittersweet for all of us because our successful trilogy is coming to an end. But today's show is live. It is. Anything can happen and trust me, it will. What are we doing really? We're going to look at urban farming and uh, drink some wine. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a look at the ATA, Artist Television Accent, as an amazing art space. And we have Julie Rubio here in the studio, an cool. amazing filmmaker. Awesome, and then we're gonna watch an inspiring story about two strangers and how they in influenced each other's lives, just like uh, you influenced mine. Like you influenced mine. Yes, uh, but it's live, it's live. And I see the people in the control room look a little bit sweaty, but cameraman look okay, so yep, it's gonna be all good. The tapes are rolling, there are no cuts. Up next, up next, a success story. I'm Courtney Venus. And I'm Camilla Stenmark, and you're watching IDTV Live. I spent my 21st birthday at the corner of Geary and Powell with the sign saying, it's my 21st birthday and I'm sober. Help! Uh, I am currently the lead channel operator for the school's two educational access cable channels. I dropped out of high school my senior year because I got tired of the high school scene and I chose to be homeless, which was a mistake, and traveled around Colorado for a while, then uh, came to San Francisco via Seattle. I left because I was in trouble and I needed a change, a change in scenery, change in everything. Well, when I first became homeless, I had a romanticized lifestyle, complete freedom, do what I want, whenever I want, however I want. But when you have to scrape together enough money to just ride the bus to go find somewhere to eat, and buses aren't that expensive, <laughs> that's harsh. And, um... I just got tired of living that way. Panhandling, bumming around, uh, taking what I could when I could. Um, being homeless and having been homeless, it's easy to see why people are on drugs and alcohol. You get numb and you don't feel your pain. And, uh, I just didn't want that lifestyle. I don't want to live like that anymore. friends introduced me to this lady and a couple nights later she invited me over for a couch and a shower and a meal and laundry. A deal much too good for any homeless youth to turn down. And I'm still there, um, 12 years later. And we're married. <laughs> I moved into her house and started helping her raise her child and got my health back. Uh, it took about a year and that's when I came back to City College just to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Without her offering that first night at her place, it never would have happened. Most of the older homeless people said get off the streets as soon as you can and stay off. <laughs> uh, some of them actually enjoyed the lifestyle and chose it and spoke highly of it, but I didn't take their advice. <laughs> I was tired of that lifestyle. I'm very lucky and I recognize this and I recognize it every day. And Twelve years later I still recognize it every day. I want to be a writer and a producer. 
TV. TV. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. I actually ran into Timothy the other day mm -hmm. outside of class, and he's a really nice guy. He told me he's moving to Hungary. I yeah, think. he yeah. is uh, leaving us for Budapest, just like that. But it's an amazing yeah. success story. Coming up, we're going to take a look at sculpturing. Sculpture. We have an amazing sculpture class here at the City College. Yeah, take a look. Enjoy. Yeah, what are you doing? Welcome to Philip Esquini's sculpture class here in the Visual Arts Building. Phil has been teaching sculpture at City College of San Francisco for 34 years. He pointed out the relevance of sculpture in everyday life. Being creative, solving problems, critical thinking. If you apply them in a creative way, you can solve different problems. What I try to do in the class is to get students to not only make sculpture, but to begin seeing sculpture out in the everyday world. So whether they're going to a a cemetery or they're walking downtown and they look up at a building and they see embellishment on the side of it or to look at the car or the bus that you come to school in as a sculpture. Um, that's what I'm trying to do is to get sculpture not only to be understood as a fine art but also how is it practical and how does it fit into your everyday life. We asked some of his students why they're taking the sculpture class and what sculpture means to them. I really enjoy it. I like Phil as a teacher. Um, kind of gives me a lot of leeway to do whatever I want. It's one of the only things, one of the two things I say in my life where I can lose all sense of time. I can just kind of zone out and do whatever I want to do. Well, I think this class is great. It's uh, a class that, I mean, I've learned a lot of things, um, how to use tools, uh, plaster molds, carving. Um, sky's the limit, pretty much. People should try to work with three-dimensional form. Oftentimes what happens is people begin taking art classes and they take painting and drawing and design and then they disappear. They don't think there's anything else or they're intimidated by sculpture or ceramics. Right. And they're good courses to have. It helps you think about form and space and, and brings those skills you've learned in the two-dimensional classes to a different kind of cohesive mass so you can experiment. 